Welcome back to the Ride Boundless Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Ride Clean. Ride Clean is an ultra premium polish and sealer. It's simple to use. Just simply shake, spray, and wipe. Um, it's UV protectant. Um, it's water repellent. And, and it does an outstanding job. Um, go right now to rideclean.co. Use promo code RBPODCAST. Um, and you'll get 15% off plus free shipping. On this episode, we have a good friend of mine, Milo Lopez. He's a young cat that has ridden thousands and thousands of miles. He's got a pretty nice motorcycle collection that he has with his father. Um, And we get into his stories of his long journeys, rides, his recent trip to Sturgis, um, a thousand mile ride in the same day. He's trying to beat the record. Uh, we get into it really good. So we're just going to go ahead and get this started right now. Welcome to the Ride Boundless Podcast. How are you doing, bro? I'm doing excellent, brother. How are you? I'm doing wonderful, man. I wanted to uh, say thanks for hooking me up and finding that showy helmet. That was a great fucking find. You're welcome. I found it on OfferUp, and it fits your bike absolutely perfect. Fucking amazing, especially after the paint job. Mm-hmm. It's it's so fucking on point. Like I enjoyed it prior. That that you know the helmet that I'm talking about is uh it, it's the HP version for the GS, and it has all the colors in it. But uh, I wasn't satisfied with the blue paint that I had in the front. So after that I painted it white, you know the flat matte white, bro. The helmet looks so fucking killer. It matches it absolutely perfect, oh, bro. Like every freaking color, yeah, all five shades of it. It's so funny, bro. Your bike looks amazing right now. Thank you. Yeah, it went with the whole blackout. You did the whole blackout. What was the original color? It was the glacier gray. It was like gray, like a super light, a gray baby blue. And then it had the uh, the red seat, right? Yeah, the ugly red seat. And I switched it out for a Saddleman. Yeah, Saddleman's fucking rocking it. I, I had the Saddleman. I ended up getting the Rally seat after the Saddleman just because of the aesthetics of, um, you know, the red and blue. It matches it as super good. Super. And it's like super sleek, bro. Yeah, it looks fucking killer. What have you done to your, your bike? And and you have a few bikes, actually, right? Yeah, fortunately, I do, bro. So basically, the BMW, um, when I got it, I wrapped it. Wrapped it black. I powder coated everything black. Got the cases that from the dealer. So you powder coated the... So what did you... So you wrapped it or powder coated it? Um, I didn't want to paint over the like gray just to leave it stock. So basically, I wrapped the the gray stuff and then I powder coated all the uh, like aluminum color stuff. Who did your, uh, your wrapping? Because I reached out to a few places and not... They say they do it or they did it and they stopped. Basically, the he who not shall not be named did a shitty job. So okay. I'm not going to rep anybody. That, okay. Yeah. I but, um, appreciate the honest response. Yeah, it's the truth. And you changed the uh, the muffler right now. I changed the muffler. Luckily, Jaime helped me out uh, yesterday. Um, I put the... And that's LP power. Yes, I put... Yeah, he is like the best fucking mechanic we could ask for. Um, I um, did yesterday at his house. It's a Yoshimura exhaust, just the um, canister, but it sounds really good, actually. I don't think that it gave any, any performance, but... It yeah, it definitely sounds good. I, and you can be heard, yeah. which is the important part. Very, I mean, we can luckily, um, oh, yeah, one other upgrade that we did was uh, the clear waters. Um, that's way we can be seen. But, yeah, the definitely, Dixies. Yeah, definitely now you can you can hear me now. How, how do you feel with the Dixies, the lighting, just the lighting aspect? Is, is it your favorite of all bikes? Due to the lighting, yeah. I mean, you can see for forever. We were coming back from... We were coming back from basically like San Luis Obispo. Yeah. And uh, my friend had a, my friend, we did a 1K actually on the way back from the 1K. You, you guys were coming through the PCH? Yeah. We were coming through BCH and it's fucking super dark. And he has his uh, headlight on a Dyna with a T-Sport fairing, you know, like the whole basic Dyna douche. Um, he, <laughs> he has it. He, but the thing is like, I didn't check this before we left, which I really should have. Cause like, like due to basic knowledge, but his headlight was shifted way too down, so he couldn't really see in front of him. In front of him, yeah, yeah, he can see well. His tire, exactly. Like it was really like, which he couldn't even see that because the fairing covers the immediate. Ex- yeah, so it was like super, like just a shitty setup. So basically, um, I tell him, get in front of me, open up your mirrors, don't look back. Like you'll be fine. Just stay in front of me, like that. Yeah, like that. And he's like, "Are you sure?" And I'm like, "Bro, just get in front of me. Like we got it." 
So he gets in front of me, and I turn on, like, and I flash the lights. Dude, you can see up for, like, a mile ahead. Like, easy. He, easy. And I had to put the... And, uh, and full blast. Not, yeah. not just in front of you. You oh, can no, see no. on the sides like, of you, on top uh, of you. Everything. Everything. Like, full fucking cannons. Like, you have, like, some machine guns. Like, yeah. I mean, you have the same ones. But oh, they're fuck, amazing. They're fucking awesome. They're, they're amazing. I, I, I thought when we uh, ordered it and got it, they were quite big they're extremely big they're Which, actually they're five and three quarters that's fucking two hardly that's like two dyna headlights you know what i mean yeah headlights yeah headlights exactly yeah. so it, it, it was pretty i remember we had the conversation we were even contemplating on, on putting it on yeah and switching them out maybe selling them and switching them out but then, um, but then the new mounts you found, which mm. is hilarious, because you were the first one to order yeah. it, and but I the last have, one, and I still haven't put them and on, and still haven't put them on, yeah. which you reached out to me and told me you're gonna do. Mm -hmm. um, and then the person we were competing with ended up doing it before. That's so funny. He always beats <laughs> us. He always beats us. Yeah, he beat me. I like. I lost it his own game. Yeah, for sure. That, that that totally happens. But fuck, man, they were so fucking big. I did not want to put them on because they, they're just huge. They're scary. Like when we go off, they're intimidating. Yeah. Intimidating. And and with the with the bracket, it came with even worse because they fucking stood out and they were just in the way. But they light up so fucking well. I the one thing that like that's when I looked into the brackets. I was driving next to Jaime, like at a solid speed and like you would see how much they vibrated that's when I, we just that's when i went and like decided that we needed to remount them on the bottom remount them on the bottom and now Way remount them so. on the bottom bro so so how do you have it right now you just got the regular bracket do, yeah i yeah. still have it on the crappy stock one did you flip it upside down you left no, it hanging it's uh, the the original the standard way. yeah that mm -hmm. drives me crazy yeah the aesthetics I, no, yeah, I definitely need to do that already. I, I mean, the, the thing is, is is you have a, you know, these, these motorcycle companies, BMW, Harley Davidson, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They spend, you know, millions of fucking dollars on, on the design of, of the bike, the aerodynamics, you know, the design, the lighting, the posture, everything. And to have these just big cannons just stick out of it. So weird. That's like definitely one thing with the BMW that like it's so like. It's like a fucking spaceship, you know what I mean? And they definitely like the aerodynamics, like sincerely, do really get fucked up with those headlight. With those, it's like two headlights. Bro. It's like two headlights. It's two headlights. Did you see? Uh, I was talking to Rob Carpenter, the stunt guy. He mm -hmm. does amazing fucking shit. He was telling me about the Dakota um, LCD screens for the streak line. Oh, okay, so cool. it's full LCD. You all can, the gauges. The gauges. You can do um, like download an app, and you can change the colors and oh, modify them and change them. It, it, it look it looks fucking sick. I, I want to do that. What what have you done to your streak line? And you have a CVO, right? Yeah. So basically, we have. Well, it's like basically the whole collection is like mine and my father's. So yeah. um, he has a uh, two CVOs. One's a fourteen and one's a fifteen. The Ultra Glide. Um, it's super nice it's um it's a cvo it's a 2015 that's CVO. the blue and black right that, that's the yeah it's a blue and black one and all he did was i uh, put a vance and Hines, uh, exhaust on it which i'm not really a fan of the when once we maybe later on i'll put in a thunder header but the um his 14 uh streak light that doesn't have a tour pack that one has a thunder header and it's like spot on with the 110 both of them come with 110s the yeah. cvos but yeah. they're definitely it's a good motor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it runs really hot. I took one of them to Sturgis. Um, I fucking burned the shit on my leg, but it was on, fun. on this trip right now, right? Mm -hmm. Which one did you hit, did take? The fourteen? Uh, I took the fourteen. Yeah. How was that? It was awesome. It's uh, dude, the one ten really, really does. You don't need anything, honestly, the, with the six speed. But um, definitely like banging banging songs everywhere is definitely fun. That's but like one big thing. One like big pro to bagger yeah the the, the sound system mm -hmm. do you do you like rocking the music more through the fairing or the helmet through the fairing yeah like I, I rode i rode like a lot of hours this whole trip and i switched off because i would like make phone calls and i'd be listening with my send too because i got the new we got the new 50r yeah but um the but just something about like having your windshield open well because the fairing like blocks the wind so well that if you have your visor open you can hear the audio really well and it's just, it's just fun. What what shield do you have on the on the on the street line? It's a Clockworks. It's a clock. Great it's a, fucking it's a, company. Yeah, it's a fucking. I had to do a Clockworks. In two thousand eight, I bought a street light. That was my first street light in two thousand eight. And then Clockworks was the only one really working on shields. Fucking loved it. Yeah, they're still the best. <laughs> There's yeah. I have it on the. I have a Memphis shade right now. It's it's doing really fucking good. It, oh, it, the awesome. design's so simple and and so sleek that it, it's just awesome. 
the clockworks when you add that it gives it more of a fucking style and yeah, it kind of sure. you know changes the yeah. the the form of the fairing the batwing fairing so it looks fucking crazy but the the, the Memphis shade if, if you don't want to change anything but want all the convenience that's super awesome too yeah the uh the coast glide has a clockworks the coastline clockworks Matt that, that like, thing's a masterpiece shout out Matt he hooked it up Matt Laidlaw from Laidlaw Harley Davidson they mm-hmm. fucking they're mastering those huh yeah definitely what what tell us about your your coastline so basically um my father bought the orange and charcoal gray coast glide thing looks fucking mean yeah we have luckily enough I've bought it around the guys a couple times but it's uh Fuck, that bike's beautiful, bro. I mean, What's the history? It's won competitions, right? Um, yeah, it actually won Battle of the Kings. Um, the bike was uh, shipped it, like to Italy. It took a couple of months, but yeah, it was at a, it was in Italy, won a couple of shows. It has numerous amount of trophies. It's basically Matt's, uh, Matt's baby, honestly. They built um, the orange one and the blue one, but the, uh, the orange one's really nice. And, and then Marco's built his after. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Mar- so, so Marco... Did he get a design while you were buying yours or you got yours first well, and ours was Marco was like, fuck that. And I'm making my own. Yeah. Well, he, <laughs> I, he like, his is like a, his is actually, um, a FXL RS. So his is, um, like the new, like low rider S and mine is well, ours is a sport glide. Yeah. So ours has like uh, different components in the front end, but, um, and his is, a um, FXL RS, but, um, but yeah, his, you, his, yours is the 110 or the 114. It's a uh, no no no. They're uh, it's a 107. Oh, 107. Yeah, it's the those options are 107 and 114, and that one came with the 107. Got it. Came, comes with 107 and it has a Vance and Heinz exhaust. Did, did you get to keep the trophies? Um, luckily enough, actually, Matt was kind enough to give us one trophy. I mean, I know that. <laughs> well, I mean, dude, like we didn't build it. You know, what I mean, it's, yeah, it's a beautiful bike. He he, they did all the work. I mean, shout out to Lay Laws, but they they're killer at that. Yeah, they they. They have multiple awards, bro. Like, you can see them. Yeah, he he could he could have gave them all to you if he wanted to. You know, yeah, that would have <laughs> been awesome. But yeah, I mean, that's part of the value to the bike. Yeah, the the bike is uh, dude, that bike's beautiful. My dad really knocked it out of the park with that one. When so, when when did you get? Because because you have a pretty big collection of bikes, which is fucking awesome. When when did this whole passion for motorcycles uh, so, kick in, and and how did it get started? Your dad was riding. I mean, yeah. So um. I've been on dirt bikes since I was three, um, like three, four years old. I, I mean, I'm not going to be like, I was a badass at three, but it had training wheels, but I was definitely riding at three. Yeah. But, um, so my dad's always had that passion. He had his first bike in 2001. It was, a uh, what was it? A fat boy. It was a fat boy. Nice. It had like those like ugly cast rims that like, yeah, it's all Terminator. One piece. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was the look. That was the look. Bro. What color was the paint job? Black um, or silver? silver? It was nice. silver, silver, silver. <laughs> and it had the, and it had like, yeah, it had like that. And it had the blonde motor. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah it was, yeah. Um, my dad fixed that. My dad fixed that one up. Went a couple of shows, um, paint job, everything exhaust. Like he like. I mean, my mom showed me the receipts later on in life, but like it, he was like deep into that, like in 2001, which is funny. Yeah. But um, he, like unfortunately, that bike actually got stolen at a at a, at one of those old uh, Jesse James, like um, uh, like block parties. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, they just just rolled it out. Yeah. They just picked it up and go like. Fuck. Yeah. So that was that was cool. The good thing is that. My mom w- was it just parked in the parking lot or yeah, was it no, there for the show? And no, no, no. It was it was um, parked on the street, but like there's like hundreds of bikes on yeah, the street. Yeah. But that bike was fucking nice. Never found it. Huh? Never found it. Gone. I, I don't think they ever find anybody's bike. Do they never do? They never do, bro. That's fucking insane. But um, but what yeah. Do they, what do they do with it? I wonder. They just they just fucking scrap them to pieces. And just fucking sell them for parts. Mm-hmm. It is what it is, but fucking. That's insane. But um. So that was his first bike. So that was his first bike in 2001. So that was always like, I went to the shows with him, went to the diners, you know, stuff like that. There used to be a spot right there in uh, Downey. I don't even know what it's called, but it's right there up above Paramount. But, um, but yeah, so then uh, that was in 2001. My dad bought a 2007 Sportster. He bought it like probably in 09. I was like 13 years at the time, like 13 years old at the time. So basically that Sportster, Sportster 1200 and Nightster, it was an 07. He, uh, he gave that bike to me. When I was when I was fifteen, bro. That's uh, fucking cool. So it was like perfect. I I mean, since I had already ridden big big dirt bikes and stuff like that, I was already like ready for the. I wasn't gonna get an eighty three, and my dad already had the bike. You know what I mean? So it was yeah. awesome. But um, but yeah. So then um, 
just the collection started growing. I still have that bike. And you get, and you get, yeah, I was going to ask, you guys just started keeping everything you yeah, bought. Yeah, uh, we, I've sold bikes. I've bought and sold bikes because I had a, I bought a, I bought a 2009 Monster 1200 when I was like 20, which was pretty cool. Yeah. But it was not what I wanted. I had it for like six months and I sold it. Flipped it. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, I bought it. I bought it because I liked it, bro. But the suspension and like, I was getting back problems and I was fucking 20 years old. So I got rid yeah. of that shit. I just like the cruiser like position, you know? Like that's why I don't like sport bikes. Well, especially with the sports are being your first yeah, you know, it bike. Was the, everything. Yeah. Fucking. So then you got, then after that, what was your next bike that you got? Um, from the sports I got the Ducati from the Ducati. Um, well, yeah. So it was the Ducati monster 1200 2009. It was a great Badass one. Badass bike. Um, I had that one and then was it the, the gray with the red frame or mm-hmm. with yeah, the red frame? It had the red frame and it, and, and I had bought that thing with the, uh, Timurignani exhaust already. Yeah. So it was already all like souped up. All I did was I, like, uh, I changed the levers. Nice. And that was it. So you flipped that. Yeah. Replaced it with, I, um, we went to a, um, I was already 16. No, I was already like 21 at the time, but basically I had the, I had the Ducati monster and there was a Vegas bike weekend. Yeah. So um, I rode up with my dad's, at this point in time, he had already had a 2002, what is it, um, a Softail. This is Softail Deluxe. So I rode up with that and um, basically had taken like 500 bucks, you know, just for expenses, like just cash. I had my cards and stuff, but um, basically we get to a Triumph dealer, like inside the expo, and there's a uh, white XR1200, a 20, 2012 white XR1200, and that's like basically like uh, what i believe is like the best sports chair like available so it has yeah. like dual inverted uh 44 millimeter front end and then it has a uh, piggyback shocks that are like factory it was like a 1500 like dollar like a uh, suspension upgrade that's like a factory suspension upgrade but um so i found that bike i found that bike and basically i i bought it right then on the spot i bought that bike on bought that bike on a friday I uh, left my five hundred dollar deposit the fi- with the only five hundred dollars that I had taken. <laughs> to I, um, I paid the I paid the deposit and I had picked it up the following Thursday. I sold my Ducati the following week. That's fucking. Crazy. I really didn't like the Ducati. It was really not a. It was a shit. It was a shit show, honestly. Yeah, I, I I've never. Shoot, man. You know what? I've never even. I love Ducati, and I was looking at the Hyper Mozart and the Multistrada and everything else. But fuck, I've never owned one or ridden one. Yeah, you know, they, so I, I can't I can't even agree or disagree with that other than it looks fucking badass. Yeah, definitely. I I I definitely love the look. I definitely hated the riding position. I mean, it was it was fun. It was definitely an experience. Like I said, that shit don't it only lasted me like six months. Yeah. And then I scored with I scored on my white bike, which I still have um that bike's been out of commission for the last like year because um my dad blew a head out and Glendale can't fix it and it's been at Glendale it's been at Glendale Harley Davidson for like the last year. So how, how does that work when it's there for fucking a year? Are they, are they charging you storage or they're I, just I, I waiting for parts? I don't, I don't know how that's going to work because we, I asked for a bigger motor and I asked for the upgrade. Like when, so the head was already fucked up, I was like, you know what, let's just make it a little bit bigger and then charge me what it is and get it done. Right. And I figured if you do it at the dealer, it's going to be done at the dealer, hopefully the right way. And, Basically, I haven't seen that bike in a fucking year, so actually, I'm gonna have the call this week. Now that I am, yeah, that's crazy. That that happens to you and people like you when you have so many fucking bikes. You could totally afford it to just be there for two, three years. But bro, jump on that. No, I definitely, I definitely miss that bike. That bike's fucking. That bike's a ripper, honestly. Yeah, it's like it's one of the of the time, just 2012. It's the only bike that's. It's the second best bike compared to the V-Rod, but the V-Rod's, uh, like, handling position is a piece of shit. Piece of, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the forward the controls. Forward controls yeah. yeah, they fucked that, that up. Shit. Never, never liked the fucking... Um, I love the, the aesthetics. It looks fucking... About the, what was it? The the V-Rod special? The, the Night Rod special. With the fat-ass tire on the back. Yeah, the, the 240 in the back. The Night Rod special was fucking amazing looking, but to ride it was just... Oh, man. You would get really tired really I hate quick. forward controls, bro. I can't... I wouldn't... Yeah, I just... Like some of the bike, the newer bikes come with forward controls. Can't do that shit. Have you ridden a bagger with the mid controls? Uh, no, I haven't. But people I've, are doing that. Yeah, definitely. a lot. And it's it's an expensive setup. I'm pretty sure that it's worth it because I love mids. But I did 
4,500 miles on these, like on the bagger. And I have absolutely no complaints. Maybe because well, you don't know warms. better. Maybe right. because you don't know better. Like, and I have the two shifters like up and down, you know, on yeah, the left I, I, I missed that. So maybe, maybe like, I don't know better, but if I rode a bike with fucking mids, then you'd be like, all right, cool. I, I don't know if you know this, but the, uh, the new 2020, I think maybe even 2019, they took the heel shifter off. Oh, that's kind of uncomfortable. That's like <laughs> bagger status, bro. That's, that, that's what makes it. Well, that's no, what makes it a fucking bagger. That's what makes it a bagger and kicking it with your back heels. Fuck it. I was so excited. I swear when I, when I traded in the FX DLS to go into the uh, bagger, that was the first thing I was looking for. And I was like, hey, where's the heel shifter? They're like, it doesn't come with it. I go, really? And they're like, it doesn't come with the heel shifter and it doesn't come with an extra fob. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, it comes with one fob. One fob. And one I, fob that you're going to fucking lose. Lose instantly. But the only thing I, I love about, well, I love many things about Harley, but what's really cool about Harley is if you lose your fob, you can use your pin. Oh, yeah, definitely. Which is awesome. That's, on, on the GS, you can't do that. Fortunately for me, I'm not fob life, bro. So the Dyna, the Dyna doesn't have a fob. The Oh, the Dyna, because of, of the year. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a 16, but it's a, yeah, it's just a low rider. So it only has a, a basic key. Yeah. Which is good. Milo, just for the sake of the listeners, how would you introduce yourself and, and what's your background? Uh, um, my name is Milo Lopez. My Instagram is at LPZ Milo. Um, I'm 24 years old. I was uh, born in born in Orange County, raised in Downey since I was like seven. I like riding motorcycles with my friends. I like going far in motorcycles. Um, I like to camp on motorcycles as well. I've done that as well. Yeah, you have. Mm, that's it, bro. The only the only thing that I'd probably be good at is riding a motorcycle. I don't I don't have an extensive list of cool shit, but I can definitely ride a motorcycle. That's for sure. Absolutely, and, and you put more fucking miles than anybody I've seen, especially uh, for your age. Uh, yeah, that's something that I've been doing pretty well. Luckily, um, luckily I was able to do a uh, Sturgis this this actually this year. Um, in so 2020 with all the craziness, I know, bro, that was a <laughs> definitely a risky move, but just as, just like for the listeners sake, I didn't have a single dollar spent in a hotel, which means that you just go straight cowboy and you fucking shower in rivers and in lakes. And I mean, I did it for 12 days, 12 days. It was pretty cool. No complaints. I mean, I didn't. I mean, just just so you guys know, if you guys go to any other state, you guys go, like, to Utah or anywhere, like, I mean, everyone's living their life pretty normal, bro. Pretty yeah. I, compared to, like, L.A., like, lockdown status. Well, I, I think any major city that has so many fucking people Which, are, 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 you know, they have to be locked yeah. in because, obviously, we're... Look at New York. New York is because they have millions of people, you know, fucking sleeping and living on top of each other. So the risk is higher. But I've heard outside of California, when you go into Utah, Montana, I heard like that it's a house and then like half a mile down, it's another house. It's, and Yeah, it definitely is. One, one big thing that like was kind of shitty, like I had a couple of people actually like talk shit to me. Like, you know, what do you like, mean? like people were like. Like, who do you think you are? Like, don't you see, like, how the situation is? And you're over here, like, traveling, like... Some in, people, in the other states, or...? No, 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 like... Or people like you know. Instagram followers. Like, yeah. actual people that, like, follow me. And, like, not that you have to be my friend or anything. Trolls. You follow me. Like, you can be, like, in a fucking acquaintance, you know? Yeah. Really, like, it doesn't matter to you're me. You're talking about trolls. Yeah, but, like... um, But, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of fucking Karens, honestly, had some real fucking opinions about that. But, I mean, I shut everybody up. It was funny. But it was... um. Definitely eye opening, but I mean, yeah, I under I definitely like respect that. Like in LA County, you know, with so many fucking people, it's definitely like a different situation. But like, um, the whole experience was was cool. I got tested as soon as I got back, negative as fuck. So that's it was fun. That's all that matters. So so it took you twelve days. How many days to get? Th what, what were you doing? I, mo most people that I know that go to stir just usually do like uh five hundred, five hundred, five hundred, and, and usually get there by the third day. Were you guys rushing? Did you go the day of? Did took, you go prior? I took the slow route. So I took my sweet ass time, which I should have progressed a little bit on the way there. That way I could have enjoyed two days more. But it was it was all good. Basically, the first night we um, we went from here to Mesquite. We stopped in uh, Vegas to have uh, dinner. Um, Mesquite. Stayed in Mesquite. Which is the only hotel that we have, fucking Casablanca, forty five dollars. The first part of the trip. Yeah, yeah the <laughs> only fucking, the only fucking uh, hotel. Um, but um, Casablanca. Then we let me get the list out. 
it's kind of a lot of places but yeah so um the following morning we hit zion then from zion we ended up in salt lake and that's where i have a cousin that lives there so um we we had a two-day layover waited um for some buddies one uh, from new mexico and one from texas uh yeah shout out nicolas and shout out um paul there you go yeah so um salt lake salt lake to bear lake then um luckily enough we were able to stay in sheridan the night at a friend's house so um sheridan which is in fucking wyoming yeah and then the following morning we hit um sheridan to sturgis so it was about but we had a two so day you, so you dragged it out so maybe like five days yeah it was days. five days Cause, yeah because yeah, we had a two-day layover in fucking in salt lake which was cool because we explored salt lake and salt lake's really fucking pretty yeah no i heard salt lake's amazing i almost want to take a flight there um how, how was sturgis um sturgis was, was it was it empty it was definitely not empty bro it was packed as fuck <laughs> was it super there packed? was people fucking taking body shots there was still strippers there was it was a shit show bro i'm so glad that i was only there <laughs> i was there just to I be seen some pictures just man. to be clear guys i was there two nights before sturgis started so it was like low traffic super chill like Literally, there was nobody at Camp Zero with us. And then I stayed for day one and day two, and then I got the fuck out. So, like, that's why, maybe that's why I didn't fucking catch COVID. Maybe that's why. I mean, even. A lot of, it's it's weird. Now, now I just, you know, because I was was following it like most people were, and I didn't hear too many cases. Mm -hmm. And I heard nobody was wearing masks. Like, nobody gave a fuck. Mm -hmm. Nobody was wearing masks. Bro, I didn't exactly. If they were wearing masks, it wasn't on their face. <laughs> they yeah. had on their ass or whatever. Yeah. So I, I've been following up and nothing. And now I think I just read, or I just read like two days ago, that there was one death from COVID from the Sturgis event. That's the first thing. And it's been weeks. I, be, I believe it. I mean, definitely like if it was like an older person, you know. So yeah. It, it happen, I mean, it could definitely happen, bro. Yeah. I mean, it could happen anywhere. Really. Like one person. Uh, I'm sorry, but like one person of the fucking thousands of people that i fucking saw bro it's it's that's not bad that bad in ratio it was yeah i'm telling you it was a, it was a shit show Do, it's usually i i i want to i'm not sure but it's usually like fifty thousand people they go to sturgis there was definitely fifty thousand people there you, yeah like yeah, that like that like it was like i said luckily enough i wasn't there for for like i didn't go to any of those fucking concerts or anything like that like I, yeah, I didn't. I didn't go to any of those concerts or anything like that. But um, no, I mean Buffalo Chip and all that shit was still popping, bro. I mean they partied to like three, four in the morning. You can hear everything from Camp Zero. How far is Camp Zero? Camp Zero is like right there. Camp Zero is like quarter couple, mile. A couple. No, like oh, from from Buffalo Chip. Yeah, it's across the street, bro. Oh, it's so across yeah, the street. So maybe it's like a quarter mile, half a mile. Yeah, like if you're gonna walk. So it's it, down the street. Well, technically, it's across the street, brother, but it's like, see, like, yeah, this far. but it's a fucking yeah, court. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I know. But it'd be fucked up telling somebody, like, yeah, let's just walk there. It's across the street. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> no, no, you're no definitely, walking. Definitely half a mile walk. And, like, I even did, like, like, I fucked up because I followed the maps and I knew that I should have, once you leave the campground, you always turn right. And I went left and I ended up riding, like, maybe like nine miles in fucking gravel road. Like, what? Yeah. Like, we did that multiple times. Um, my cousin got us lost a couple of times with like no roads, but um, like even that day I did like eight miles and it's like not fun on a fucking bagger at all. Eight miles just lost going the wrong way. No, no, no. Not going the wrong way at all. Actually going the right way. But the problem is that I didn't want to fucking gravel road. Right. You didn't want to fuck up the pain or anything. Yeah. I still haven't washed it. Unfortunately. Using that right clean. Yep. Definitely. Oh right. yeah. I finished my bottle actually. Well, I'll get you covered. Sweet. I'll get you covered. And so, and, and then in Sturgis, every bar, every hotel, every restaurant, everything was open or everything, were some shops closed? Nah, everything was open. Everything was open. With the problem what is about vendors? Everything, like AMS oil, like all, like all that, everyone was still open. I mean, the thing is, you got to check it out like this. To a small city like that, bro, to a small city like that, I mean, that's a huge income. Like, basically, yeah. the Harley dealer was telling us that, like, that fucking one week was like 70% of their sales all year. Yeah. 70%. You know what I mean? And that's like a Harley dealer. Yeah, of course. Like maybe well, they that's have for the whole fucking town. It's, it's 20,000, 15,000, 50,000, whatever the number exactly. is of people coming in in one week just to spend money 
and and buy the shirt saying buy, I went to Sturgis. Dude, there's so the many sticker, t-shirt vendors. The keychains, fucking whatever. I survived fucking like there's literally a bunch of like I survived. I COVID-19 survived COVID and Sturgis. And Sturgis. Yeah, like patches. It was so funny. So funny. Yeah, Sturgis is one of those things that I really wanted to do, but fuck, man, the whole family yeah, this and this was the eighty. COVID. This was the eightieth year. Um, I'll probably do it again next year, but maybe I can like visit Sturgis and then like keep going. And then I want to visit like the Milwaukee Museum when you're there. Like all my friends have done it, but I haven't done that yet. So maybe like next year, I'll plan it like quicker on the way there. I already know all the good spots to stop, basically, and um, and then I'll just hit it. And just hit Milwaukee. Was was this one of the furthest rides you've done? This was the furthest ride. So this was. Well, you've done Baja. Yeah, I've I've done uh, Puerto Peñasco and I've done San Felipe. I've done the that built well um, El Diablo run. Yeah, which yeah. Is, um, How how's that? That that's what, what's the setup? How does that work? You pay, you get in there, you ride with people, you don't ride with people. Um, what's the deal? That one, that one, I did it by myself. I rode. Um, yeah, I rode out there by myself. Met some. I met two guys at the at the gas station, and you see two Harleys with you know their camping shit, and you see them at the border. So you're like, <laughs> bro, you're gonna you're going the same way I'm going. Yeah, yeah. there were two guys from riding from Denver. Oh, were, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They nice. had they had put some miles in. They, I guess they had ridden those bikes up like two weeks prior. Yeah. So they rode out there, and then they got like their like vacation to get to ride over here. They went back. Well, did, they, did they rent the bikes? or No, no, no. They were there. Reserves. So they rode them from Denver. They left them here. They went back, worked two weeks, and then they fucking, like on their other three-day weekend, they fuck, they flew in and they hopped on their bikes and they were in fuck. Yeah, right there. So they had That's already badass. done the, the... That's dedication. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, I met them I met them at the border in El Centro, and then, um, and then yeah, rode to San Felipe with them. Um, San Felipe, it's... It's basically a camp setup, so Bill will like um, rent out this whole campground. Um, it's like twenty bucks or thirty bucks. I don't know. Yeah. Um, or you can be bougie and you can get a hotel that's like two blocks away, which is probably the right thing because you can't really sleep. I, I slept in a, I slept in my tent on the second floor of like, basically I had the stage right there, so the, like yeah. I can hear the music all fucking night. But I had a really good view. Like it's on my Instagram, but. But um, but yeah, it was definitely an experience. I've done that, and I did um, also met some buddies one time in uh, Puerto Peñasco when I bought the when I had just bought the BMW actually, which just so you guys know, if you guys cross the border, the your insurance only covers you like fucking like fifty miles, like a hundred miles like in, into the country. Into yeah, into that country. So I yeah. didn't. So once you're like fucking in Rosarito, like you need the Mexican insurance then. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's definitely. straight out what they call it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't I didn't know that was a thing, you know. Yeah. So I had <laughs> taken a fucking brand new bike that I had like made one fucking payment on you know what i mean like that shit was brand new um i took it to puerto peñasco and i got there that was actually my first um my first attempt which is it's five it was 400 miles but basically um like i'm just so you guys know there's an instagram called at ride 1k in a day and that's like definitely a thing so um i wanted to kind of like test my time because I was, I've well, because they have a time posted, right? Yeah, a they record. have a time posted. So there's the records like 13 hours or 12 and a half hours, or people do it like in normal times of like 18 hours, 20 hours. You can take all day, you know what I mean? It's yeah. The wrong so way the day. average is like 15. Yeah. So then, um, but basically the the records like 12 hours or 13 hours, and since I was by myself, I wanted to I wanted to open it up and I wanted to like spread my legs, and I had just got the BMW, and I really wanted to see what kind of time I could put down because. Because I want to beat the record, like yeah. that's like one thing that I really want to do. So and, and how do they track this? You take a picture of your. You start at the gas, your first gas pump, you the receipt, and you take a picture of it next to the um, next to your odometer. Right. So it would have the time that you pumped, how much you pumped, which doesn't matter, and it would have the mileage, the mileage on the. Cool. Yeah. So um, so I didn't do a one k, but I did the four hundred miles, which was the thing. But timing wise, uh, like I got, I got the time, bro. Like I can, if I would have, pro- if I produce for, I did 400 miles, but if I did the exact same thing for the next 600 miles, which obviously it's a lot easier said than done. Right. A lot easier. Right. But the fact that the BMW holds up well and really does give you, it has eight gallons of like fury. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. people say like it, full, it, it, it's, it's 300. One thing that like really cracks me up is like, People say a full tank to freedom with your fucking sportster, but like the problem <laughs> is like 
I got mm, eight 90. gallons, bro. Like, yeah. this is a real full tank to freedom. You can make it like to Big Bear and back on that tank. Easy. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. We we've done that. We've done um we've done Lake Arrowhead and quickly. No, just no let's problem. just go for lunch. Yep. Get lunch, come right back, and and you still have gas. No problem. I even I even went. I even did a one k to lunch into San Francisco with the BMW. That was actually that ride that um that those Clearwaters came in clutch. But we rode from Moreno Valley to San Francisco. Had lunch at Dolores. Rode back, went to Moreno Valley, was still short on my miles, hit Moreno Valley, went to my grandmother's house in Santa Ana, and then got home. And then my miles were complete. So, yeah, SF and back is short on miles. So if you need to loop it, you need to loop it. Yeah, right. you need to loop it because I think San Francisco is like 400 yeah. tops. Three, 380. I think, yeah, 380. Exactly what it is. So I was like, I was short. And the thing is. Yeah, somebody told me they did 1,000 to Frisco and back. I'm like, that's not 1,000. Mm-hmm. It's not. But in like one uh one shitty part was I had to let my friend do the math the whole the whole way, and um, what do you mean do the math? Like not do the math, but like let us know how many miles we needed in order to get home, like in order to complete the thousand. And basically, um, towards the end, I start to realize that I'm seventy miles short from what his number is on my motorcycle, and my motorcycle's brand new bike. It was the BMW. Yeah. Um. So I'm. We're like talking about it and I'm like, bro, why do you have 70 miles more? Like, did you reset at some point or did you like, what did you do? He's like, and I'm like, nah. So then I look over and I check his bike and he has a fucking chain drive, bro. So he has a chain drive and the chain drive, whether it be, whether it read two miles or three miles more, since we had knocked out a thousand miles in the day, there was a 70 mile fucking difference at the end of the day. Fuck. Was it aftermarket or stock? It was, um... It was an IMZ Elite kit, uh, like a full, like a full kit. But I mean, I mean that is known to happen. It's it's gonna yeah, yeah. it's gonna change it just slightly. But the fact that it had bit me in the ass that day because I had to ride a whole, I had to ride a whole hour and an hour and ten minutes by myself. <laughs> yeah, just to get my fucking miles in. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, I I, I didn't even think about that. The change would do that. Fuck up the mileage over time. Yeah, I mean, it, it, if it reports fucking multiple miles it's gonna in the long haul it's gonna make a difference yeah like absolutely. i said well that was 1000 miles that had 70 yeah an hour of riding mm-hmm. a little bit over an hour mm-hmm. and then you're gonna try to do so when are you gonna go for the thousand mile run and try to beat the record and well, what bike are you gonna ride i'm definitely doing it in the bmw um i'm just just weather wise we're kind of waiting it out i don't know if the thing is, I'm not going to wait another four months, so I'm trying to do it within, like, the next 30 days. Yeah. Um, but It's been crazy weather. Yeah, that's the this thing. This weekend's going to be 105 again. That's, that's the in thing. In L.A. I hate riding in hot weather, so I don't know if we're going to, if I'm like going to start this at night or start this, like, at midnight or, like, it's just the possibilities are endless. But I also don't even know where to where to hit it. I mean, I don't. I was thinking about Portland. I can I could ride to Denver. Denver's a thousand and thirty two miles, bro. That would be the exact like miles that I need. And just fucking chill out there, and mm-hmm. then try to beat the record on the way back. I mean, I would probably I'll probably with with uh, like having more gas. I'd probably like uh, like not, like. I, but isn't it crazy? Like I I made that comment, but think about it. Isn't it crazy how well planned you got to do this? Because think about it, when a plane flies you know, from California to Miami, it usually makes in about four hours and 15 minutes, four and a half hours. Mm-hmm. But when it's flying back, it usually takes over five hours. And that's just because of the, the jet streams. The jet streams going west to east are better. So they can ride those. They get they get speed on it. Mm-hmm. It's fucking amazing. But if you did a thousand miles to Denver, I mean, there's a chance that the ride back might be faster than the ride over there or vice versa because but- of going up the mountains versus going down the mountains you know, depending where you start, you know, elevation, like there's a lot to calculate to benefit and maximize that fucking record. If you think about it, brother, you, you just opened another fucking like fucking, <laughs> fucking chat, po- like, portal. Yeah, bro. A fucking black portal. So now you're fucking telling me that I have to attempt this twice. 
what I'm, <laughs> what, what I'm saying is, is there's a chance, like, okay, go riding to Denver, that the wind that's can fucking push awesome. Me and well, like, no, me. no, because you're going to start at a different elevation. In, in, uh, elevation. Your bike's going to run different. Yeah. Like May, maybe at, at a higher elevation, going towards down, obviously, is going to be faster. Your motor's going to run smoother. You're right. How how is the how are your breathers gonna fucking have, dude, bro? It's a whole dude. That is crazy. There's it, a whole it, fucking like. If you get into it, I mean, it, bro. People, there's professional swimmers that shave their bodies yeah, because definitely. they lose races. They have lost races by half a second. That is crazy. So you you were just doing a ride with somebody else, and they gained seventy miles because they were running a chain drive. Uh-huh. You know, and and what I'm saying is that you know there's there's a lot to just calculate other than. Fuck it! I don't know if I'll do my thousand miles to San Francisco or Washington or Denver uh-huh. or, or or even the East Coast. The East Coast is flat. There's no hills. I oh, bet fuck. you could do fucking a thousand miles in in Florida. Piece of cake. It's just boring. Super flat. Yeah, yeah. boring as fuck. Super flat. Fuck that. I I I've, I said this many times, but people have heard people just to get a little hill experience. Mm-hmm. We'll go from Miami and go to Orlando, where Disney World's at, mm-hmm. and they have like a little few hills in the parking lot. That's the only. It's, hills really, it's really that bad. Oh, it's super. Re- Re- I mean, Rio has Rio has explained it like, bro. I, see this table? <laughs> that bad? That bad? Bro, when you fly, you can. It looks like you'd see the whole state. No way. Oh, I swear to God. Yeah, and I haven't visited, brother. Yeah, you could see the whole fucking state as that soon is, as you're landing. You're like, that what? Is crazy. <laughs> it's, it's super trippy. Yeah, I mean, luckily, luckily, like I said, born and raised here. I mean, we have some of the best fucking riding situations. Every damn day, bro. I mean, we, we have it all. Whether we, whether we go to Neptune's Zen on PCH or whether we're gonna be, I really, I normally don't hit up Azusa, but I mean, Los that was a fun ride we did when we went to Azusa. Azusa, Azusa is fun, um, but Los Angeles Crest. I mean, like everything. Even one thing that we don't do because one thing that I've noticed, and I've even mentioned this to you, that we don't go like we don't go south. Like we never go like to Cook's Corner or like Santiago Canyon, and like all that's like fun too. I mean, super badass, yeah. But um, but definitely, yeah, I do love I do love being in LA. I mean, I I don't see myself ever ever leaving, honestly. Yeah, a lot of people are leaving. Um, for the biker community, I I, I think I think California is a motorcycle paradise in oh, the yeah. sense because of what's what's located here. You know, you could do all PCH. You go to Monterey, Carmel, San Francisco. You can go to Redding. You can go to San Diego. You, you go to San Pedro. To, you go to a different country Carlos if you want to go to a different country. Mm-hmm. Um, you got Big Bear. R- recently, that's that's been the new thing. I I, I just got into um, actually Jaime went. Uh, the first time we went to um, Lake Arrowhead, mm-hmm. that's I, I haven't been there. Oh, cool! I went there when I was a kid. Beautiful. Yeah, and now it's just kind of like a regular thing. I jump on the bike. I'm, I'm there in an hour there. and yeah, ten minutes. Yeah. yeah, it's super fucking sick. But yeah, the the riding, and then the laws for riding, the lane splitting. California is the only lane splitting. Yeah, that's the state. that's probably. But one we of can't the, carry. That's what's that's what yeah, sucks. That man. that that's there's like some pros and cons to definitely living in California. People can. People can complain about being taxed all year and, and yeah, I mean, it's part of, it's part of it. But the thing is like, people would die to be here. You know what I mean? It's like, and people it, have, yeah. And people have, you know, being in California is not just like, that is like, I don't know. I, you just, I wouldn't want to be anybody anywhere else, but I'm such a fucking Cali guy. Like I'm such a LA guy, you know what I mean? Yeah. That you can't, yeah, you can't take me out of here even if you wanted to. Yeah. No, no, it's 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 hard. Especially it's hard to leave. And like you said, especially like this is motorcycle paradise, bro. Absolutely. I mean, not only am I part of one of the coolest fucking things going on right now in LA. I mean, we have some of the best bikes. Like I bought my BMW, and then was it you and Jaime that bought their that bought them together right after yeah. me? Yeah, and mine's then, is newer because Jaime got his a day before me. Oh, okay. but mine's is newer. Okay, sorry, you fucking twenty twenty guys. Just so <laughs> you guys know, just so you guys know, you know, everyone plans me about it. My bike's twenty nineteen, but um, but I saved like five grand on it, so I'm I'm not even mad about it. Yeah. Um, I um, you definitely got a great deal. The guy, the guy, um, the guy, the guy that had it prior, um, is pre owned. He had um, he had like face can not face cancer. That's so stupid. He had like jaw <laughs> jaw cancer. I'm sorry. I don't know why the fuck I said face cancer. Sorry but for had, anybody that got offended for that. But yeah, no, 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 it's kind of no funny. disrespect. Yeah, but um, he um. He had his okay. jaw cancer return, and basically, the bike had fifteen hundred miles. It was brand new, bro. Yeah, I had called it in, and I wanted it. So you got a good deal, and you help somebody out. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, a fucking win-win, bro. Sport. Who cares, bro? It's your new bike. It's a nice fucking bike. It's uh, it's definitely one of the 
best bikes I think. I, 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 I was trying to buy the one from Glendale, but you know I couldn't get the same deal they were offering somebody else for whatever reason. Long story short, I couldn't get it, but they had a, an 18 with a new LCD screen. Um, oh, cool. And I was trying to get it for 18 out the door, uh-huh. you know, which they offered to somebody. But anyways, couldn't get it. And um, I, I just didn't like the way the deal was going. So I just got the new one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the 2020s and 2019s, those are uh, the 1250, just so you guys know. But um, definitely, definitely happy with my purchase, bro. I really don't feel that I can have a more bang for the buck uh, motorcycle. And I know it's completely opposite to what I've we've been doing. And I am a Dyna guy. I do have a Dyna. I mean, we have two baggers, the Coast Glide. The XR twelve hundred. Fuck, that's a long list. Now that I said it out loud, <laughs> it's a big list, bro. Um, yeah, we have we have about seven bikes, which um, that's which definitely awesome. Which definitely, when I when I pulled up with a BMW, my dad, well, my dad had told me, I was like, hey, dad, I'm thinking about getting a BMW. Reason being that reason I fell in love with a BMW. Just a little background, I um, I flew into Mexico. Um, my godfather has a twelve hundred, a 2018 1200 um, a, adventure bike, and basically we rode it to um to the ranch, which is basically two hours away and two hours back. And um, had the whole, spent the whole day at the ranch, had a good time. Uh, luckily enough, also he has a Husvana 250 that I rode for like an hour there, which is awesome. I but heard ba- good things. But basically, um, that bike, I had never ridden four hours on a motorcycle and have felt so good after. That's yeah. when I really realized suspension the um, the big ass windshield and like the vibration of the motor because it's not like a harley you know i mean it was totally a different riding experience but since i had ridden it for four hours i got to really like know the bike and that like really kind of it it like crossed my mind i didn't really think much about it but then when i saw that the the 1250s were a thing and like that was the new thing i went to go test drive one in long beach and the cool thing is that the the owner which is a really nice guy I'm a, i don't recall his name but um he basically tells me like go three miles down turn right on whatever street it was turn right again and then turn right again so he basically like told me like take a lap and i'm like, all right cool but it was a good like maybe 12 mile fucking little gap i mean like little lap so um definitely like um one big thing is the ABS on the on the BMWs. Amazing. I, I was doing fucking 70 miles an hour and I was smashing on the rear brake and how it would do everything for you and stop on a dime. Like I had never had like rocking Brembos like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm um, sure enough that was like fascinating and um like right by the airport in the Long Beach airport, I hit a I hit a right turn like solid like at maybe 50 miles an hour honestly. And um, I felt pressure, like I felt like something hovering over me. And there was an M4, like a brand new M4, uh, like right next to me. And I opened it up and I spanked that, like I spanked the Beamer with my, the Beamer. And that's when I decided that I was going to buy that bike. Yeah. How, how, were you um, were you doing that, um, the shifting without the clutch? Yeah. So yeah, the one, one big thing that... Uh, that just so because that fucking makes you launch bro. yeah so basically um the bikes come equipped with a quick shifter you just stay on the throttle and just smash that shit with your ankle and it'll switch every gear for you and it's extremely without fun. without using the yeah clutch. without using the clutch you don't have to touch the clutch yeah. at all yeah and, j- and for the people that have the bike and haven't tried it uh you have to be accelerating when you're shifting up and you have to be decelerating when you're shifting down yeah so yeah, like definitely. like that'll be smoother at that moment if you're not going to use the clutch. Otherwise, just use the clutch. But it's amazing for racing, for racing purposes. One hundred percent. That that's what really separates. Like that's what would make this bike beat a lot of bikes on like a quarter mile. Yeah. But after definitely. that, you know, it's yeah, it's depending like, what you're riding. Definitely. Um, I mean, those bikes produce. I don't want to be like a numbers guy, but they produce 136 horsepower, like right out of the box. You yeah. know what I mean, and that's like, is that is that what the Dyna Pro chip or without the Dyna Pro chip? That is, I don't know. I would be, I would be lying mm. to you, but um, I'm, but ge- I'm guessing we're always looking for the highest number, so it should true. be. With it the should be one thirty six, but I, um, maybe. Well, I have to find it. I have to find a tuner. I have the guy. I have the guy, which is in San Francisco, to tune to tune my bike, but um, I'm kind of just waiting on it. There's no, there's no rush. I mean, the bike has more than enough power, but um, definitely the the bike produces one hundred and thirty six horsepower. It's 
it's fucking fast, bro. It's definitely faster than fuck. I don't know. I don't know how fast. I don't know what do, kind do of Harley you, do motor. You, do you have anything with the 114 right now? No, I don't. See, that's the thing. I don't no. want to be that guy. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a 110. I have two 110s and, and a 107. The 107. Yeah. There's times that I write, like, uh, like I haven't done any tuning. I haven't changed the pipes or anything. But there's times that I'm writing the streak line, and I'm like, I that's think it fucking take it. Like I said, in a quarter mile, there's no way. The, the BMW's oh, got yeah, it. for sure. But, like, long, long race, uh, that thing's going to... The, the only thing that, like, I've analyzed is the baggers are really fucking heavy. And, like, that's cool. But the problem is that with the BMW, if the 136 horsepower, like, how, many, how much horsepower, from what I understand, like, a built motor, you know, like, a cool, like, 110 built motor might give you, like, 100, 110 horsepower, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like Dyna speaking wise. You know, yeah. well, you had a, I mean, yeah, your bike FX probably had 100 horse you know, has, like, had, like, 100 horsepower, and that's, that's an like a FX DLS, but I, I don't know. I mean, we definitely got to try it. I definitely want to do, um, we should do some quarter miles. Well, here's the thing. I actually, I, the, the experience that I had was with Marco's bike and Marco has, no, he's got a 117. I don't know if he has a 117. Yeah. He, I, he didn't I build up the motor or is it 114? When I understand it's a 114. Okay. So he has the 114. I've gone side by side. We were just messing around uh, by the beach and and I, I got them both times again on on like a quarter mile like once we were at a light to the next light I, I was getting them each time and what was helping was the shifter yeah for now sure. after that I, I don't know what's going to happen I'm like I said there's plenty of times I ride the streak light and I'm you know going on the freeway or, or highway whatever you want wait call I'm it. sorry but you're saying you were not not to be like that guy but you were speeding but you were with. You were on the street glider or you were on the BMW? I was on the BMW oh, against sure. Marco's. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, his, his, what's his called? The his is um his is a lowrider S. Lowrider S. Yeah, what's it called? The Coast Glider. FX LRS. Yeah, yeah, the new ones. Yeah, I was racing him with the Beamer, and, and I got him. You got him? Yeah, and I, I mean, and we, we did like two, three times. I don't want to be that guy, but I've even got you're, him. You're you're that guy. Yeah. The more you say, I don't want to <laughs> be that guy. You're definitely that. Dude, fucking I've even guy. I've even got him on the fucking. I've got him on the coast glide, and that's a 107. Yeah. Like we've we have a. Uh, so it could be rider. Could be well, yeah. We, not to be that guy. Not to be that guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But we've definitely had our our boogies on the way home. Um, I even had Rio like call me one time. Rio was like, "Hey, bro, like you always ride like this," and I'm like. Bro, I'm just trying to get home quick. Like <laughs> that's just how it is, bro. And then like another thing, um, we were coming back from Rio just specifically. We were coming back from um where were we? We were like in Thousand Oaks. Um so we're coming back and you're like I'm driving on the freeway and he, and he's like, Hey bro, like you always boogie like that on the freeway? And I'm like, Well, bro, it's not that it's yeah, this is how I drive, but um I used to live in Camarillo. So I like that's my commute, you know. What I mean, yeah. I, I commuted on my bike on the XR 1200 for fucking. You know the roads. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like 101 on the way back. Like, I know. I mean, it used to be my route, bro. I did that shit. I studied in Camarillo at Casa University Channel Islands for, for like four years. Yeah. Wow. Yep. I didn't know that. So you were you were all an astro there. Uh -huh. Rio's improved a lot too. I remember when he first started riding, we'd go to Angeles Crest. He'd be the last bike. He's yeah. Like, I, I just don't feel comfortable, which is the right thing to do. Yeah. And definitely. now, man, I, I seen him. Fuck, man. I seen him tear it up, man. He looks like. A, on, on the new Beamer. On the new Beamer, too. Oh, I can't. I haven't even seen him on the new Beamer, you know, tear it up. But on, on, on his Dyna with no ABS. And, you know, I, mean, I think it had the 103 or the 107. 103. He, he was he he's he went from the slowest person to the fastest. He and he was killing it. Another another great rider that had a and no ABS, bro. It scared yeah, the yeah. fuck out. Of that, me, well, that's that's how I mean my bike's like that too. That that's the uh, that's why I love the Dyna. Like I love the rawness. You know, what I mean, you fucking yanked that from. Well, the thing is, you had a yours did yeah, have FX, ABS. Yeah, the, you're the low rider S. Yeah, but I I had an FX DXT, which I had the P performance machine six piston brakes, but yeah. they weren't ABS. Yeah, no, no, yeah, but yeah, they yeah. still stopped. Oh, yeah, really for sure. Fun. But it locked up a lot too if you didn't pump. Oh, that's yeah, that's yeah. scary. But um, but no, um, another great rider that had ride ridden like. For a short amount of period of time, was Mark. Mark. Mark, Mark picked up. Mark too. was a fucking savage in the mountains. Yeah. Honestly, shout he out was a Mark, beast. at Mark Revis. But Mark's a savage in the mountains. I mean, and it's been a while, but like, if you know, you know, bro. Yeah, like, no, no, sure. and everybody fucking knew that. He he was one of the few people that 
the days that I wanted to fucking ride, and it, it would be him and I up ahead, like oh just, yeah, for just sure, just passing. And he's a he's a he's a big boy, but that boy can boogie. Yeah, bro. and he's like fucking three hundred pounds. Yeah, yeah, he's a big <laughs> no, guy. legit. He's like I think he's two eighty nine, two ninety. That's three hundred fucking pounds. Yeah, no, he's and, just, yeah. And and he, he no he's he, he was fucking destroying it. And I remember the first time I saw Mark, not the first time, but one day we were going to through Topanga and we mm-hmm. stopped. I think somebody's bike broke down, and I was just like, Mark, you know, like how long you been riding? He's like, ah, fucking six months. Yeah, yeah. I'm like he what? Had, he had a sports suit <laughs> before, but yeah. I was, I was like, what? He goes, yeah, six months. Just some people got it, some people don't. I was like, yeah, that's true too, you know. But he drives as a prof, prof, you know, uh, as a, pro, as oh, yeah, a he's profession. Yeah, he's a professional driver. He actually, yeah, he's, he's got like a class, class A, a license. license. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's legit at uh-huh. fucking everything. And, he, and, and, he and he very w- responsible. He had more lights on his bike at that time than any of us. My ass responsible. I've seen him do some shit that, like, I'm like, hey, bro, like, I've even had it, t- like, a couple of times I even, actually, one time I told him, I was like, hey, bro, like, you have a class A license, you know what I mean? Maybe you should, like, maybe keep it like an 85 or something, you know? Yeah. And, and like, but I mean, everyone to their own. I mean, he's a great, great rider. Definitely, well, yeah, no, he rides. W- w- what I mean is, he rides hard. Yeah, yes. you know, which, which I think is, there's a difference between riding fast and and riding hard. And what I mean by that is, I think there's an aggressive way that one person can ride a motorcycle responsibly. Yeah. Versus just speeding and trying to be the fastest one. Mm-hmm. So he he had t- there was technique in his style. Oh yeah, for sure. But yeah, did he, he definitely fucking had some swagger? That's besides, we're we're being recorded. We can't say he was speeding. Oh no no yeah for sure. I just <laughs> like I said he just has some swagger. That's no it. he he definitely didn't. Oh hopefully he'll get back on the bike. Uh, that, that 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 you know I, um, I I always talk about like you know ninety percent ninety five percent and every, and more and more the percentage goes up on you know people that get in accidents it's right or error. Mm-hmm. But bro I swear Marks was not right or error. And and that shit was like a freak accident. Yeah, <laughs> legit freak accident. Yeah, I mean, acc- we've already talked about it, but yeah, accident, ac- like yeah, accidents, accidents suck, bro. Have you had any spills? Yeah, I've had, I've had three. I've like I said, I've been, um, I've been licensed since I was sixteen. So yeah. I've been doing this shit for. Nine, I'll be twenty five this at the end of this month. So nine years now. But basically, um, a license. Yeah, license. Like legit. Like all my sports are rocking that shit like daily. But um, and definitely the bikes have changed over time. But um, but definitely um, I one spill, dude, one spill. I um, I broke a wrist. I broke a wrist on um. Yeah, some lady cut me off, and I I let go of the bars, but the wheel turned to the left, so the bar smacked my wrist like Oof. full force and like broke my wrist. Um, and uh, one time. For some odd reason, I try on some freak accident shit. I try to save um. I try to save the bike from like dropping it. I don't know how or I don't know why, but the bike was significantly to the right, and I wasn't gonna drop it. But um, and this I, was on a stop or while riding. This was at a stop. stop yeah, like it. on some yeah. On so some it was chump, a drop on some chump shit. Yeah, like I, like the bike was way to the right, and I was gonna drop it. But what happened was that I reacted with my right foot, and when I stomped the floor, I literally broke my toe. Oof. Yeah, like it was like And you still dropped it. Yeah, and I still dropped the bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I still Fuck. let the bike go. Yeah, it was a shitty it was What shitty. boots were you wearing? It was the um No, the bad thing I wasn't wearing boots. That's yeah, that's okay, what you get. You that's, know what I mean? That's what I was gonna guess. Like you can't even any any type of for example, like if you fucking go down and you didn't have gloves on, like it yeah. is what it is, bro. Like it is what it is. You, you chose that, I mean? you know. Yeah, that. you chose that shit, you know? But um, but yeah, definitely. Now with the BMW, I've been riding with my Doc Martin steel toes like all the time because they help me so much with the with the height yeah. of the bike. You know, I'm not, I'm five nine. I can definitely hold the bike down, but I just like being like comfort. Yeah, I just like and then plus, I mean, for safety, you're fucking wearing boots. You're wearing boots, you know. Yeah, but no um, boots is it's funny because I always tell people safety, safety, safety. I got a neighbor. He's got a he's got a couple BMWs, oh, cool. and uh, we went once uh, through through the fucking canyons in Malibu. He tore it up. Yeah, for he, sure. He was Savage. slow. On the 101, like, he was driving was speed the, limit. He's an older cat? Older cat, yeah. yeah. Cool. Speed limit, 65. So to get dangerous, he'd get the 67. Mm, <laughs> but I'm like, bro, come on, man. Let's hey, go. Because yeah, yeah. I, I love cutting through traffic. But when we got to the fucking canyons, Shoot. oh, I couldn't even keep up. Really? Oh, my God. So he calls me up again. And he's like, hey, let's go riding, you know, this Sunday. And I'm like, uh, let me see my schedule. You know, I might be down. He goes, you know what? 
I, you don't have enough safety gear. I don't feel comfortable. And I was like, what? And <gasps> I go with he, boots he, he and I wear gloves. Old timer stuff. Yeah, yeah. So now, now I bought the new BMW jacket with the fucking new padding. Oh, and he's sure. like, no, you need the pants too. So anyways, no way. <laughs> he wants you to have a little kid on. Dude, he goes with the full fucking kid. Oh my and he God, really but tears it's so it. Hot. No, I feel you though. I know. And I respect so that. Hot. And no, I, and I respect it a lot, but it, it just made me realize because I, I always wear boots or I wear the, the, the shoes mm -hmm. that have the protection. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always wear gloves. I always have some kind of vest or something. And and I, I th that's minimum. Mm -hmm. And I'm always promoting that. Like, that's enough. And he just made me realize, like, fuck, you can never have enough. No, you can never have enough. Definitely. Um, one of, like, my, I guess my next investments, I'm going to buy some fucking exaggerated race gloves. Like, even if they're, like, yeah. two, three bills, like, they can be, like, the normal commuter gloves. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then why? Because, on, honestly, I'm, I'm wearing some gloves that are fucking... They're just some bicycle gloves. Like yeah. They're, they're, it's, they're, they're not going to do they're shit. They're dirt bike gloves. Like, bro, they're going to skin me alive. Like, it's not going to help at all. And, like, one big thing that my dad's, my dad, like, I mean, like I said, he's been riding since before me. He's always had bikes this whole time. He never has. He stopped riding. Um, He, like, like, when I got back from Sturgis, he actually called me riding without gloves. And he was, like, he said, que te crees? Get the credit. Like, who the fuck do you think you are? Yeah, you know? Pendejo. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I was like, fuck. But like, little did he know, like, dude, I fucking did. Like, dude, I did thousands of miles. I did thousands of miles with a lot of gloves. But like, it's it's not. Nothing. But it's always at one yeah, time, yeah. bro. No, like, no, no, I understand. We all do it. It's it, no, like, yeah, definitely, definitely need to invest in some good gloves. I had, like, I, like I said, I, I had my my skinny gloves, and I definitely had waterproof gloves. But it was hot. I mean, the um, we rode in, in in hot weather. I mean, it was. 90 95 100 like the whole fucking time you riding in that shit for five six seven eight hundred miles bro you can long get, sleeve yeah, full face yeah, helmet bro hell yeah I, I i mean i'd rather have a long sleeve on than get fucking toasted that's for sure yeah oh 100 percent. yeah you can only go a few hours i mean bro we we do the malibu run grab some lunch come back if and we're still sleeveless toasted. burnt yeah. toast you're still toasted yeah. Now we jumped off uh, the love for California and how it's the best state and fucking that you will never leave it. But you're making some other points of what else you love about California. Um, the wide, the riding weather, the weather in general. Well, I mean, we we get 10, 11 months out of the year. To yeah, ride, I mean, for sure. Like I have, uh, I follow a bunch of people on Instagram, and you see people like literally like store their bikes you know what i mean and they literally, like, yeah. pull the battery out and they fucking drain it because it gets so fucking cold in their garage you know what i mean like that's, that's a insane. thing that's a thing that we i mean i just put that shit on a battery tender and you'll be fine you know what i mean yeah but, like that's stuff that luckily enough we don't have to struggle with you don't have to deal with that but i mean like i said it's not it's because i'm born here that i i like acknowledge it i i love it i absorb it but people are like there's people that are in fucking california and all they bitch all they do is bitch about being in california like yeah. feel free to get the fuck yeah, there's out no, like, there's no laws nothing stopping you not let the fucking door catch you on the way out you know what i mean like yeah. if you don't want to be here like don't be here like it's okay it's nothing wrong with it yeah i i think i think that's you, you have a hundred percent what you're saying is it can stick because you are from Los Angeles. You've always been from Los Angeles. And realistically, you don't know anything else. You know, other, yeah. you, it's not like you lived in Texas and you're comparing it. But people but, that come from another state to be an actor or to get a job or whatever the case is and then stay here and they're unsatisfied complaining. It's like any time, please. Yeah. And like but shit's gotten crazy, too, in L.A. Oh, yeah, like, for sure. It, it is. It is like the homeless encampments, tent city. Um, the prices of a lot of fucking things, you know, it, it, it's expensive. A Even, lot of money is just being misspent and, and not only just on rents and buying property, but think about it. Hypothetically, let's say you want to move to Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. Hypothetically, you have Beverly Hills money. Right. Now you live in Beverly Hills. Well, guess what? Now you got to drive a Beverly Hills car. Oh yeah, for sure. And then you, you got to take the kids to a Beverly Hills school. Oh, yeah. And then you got to go to Beverly Hills restaurants. Yeah, then you, you got to Beverly. It, it, better fucking pay to play, play. All, all oh, of a sudden, sure. you you become you know this consumer of your local businesses, and it may, maybe it's not Beverly Hills, maybe it's Glendale, or maybe it's East LA, or whatever the case is. But depending on your neighborhood, those are extra gastos, like extra oh, yeah, expenses sure. that you, that you don't even think about. For sure, it's whatever city, insane. whatever city, and like I said, this one tri one thing that I learned on this Sturgis trip, I mean. 
there's a lot of beautiful states just to oh, be clear and beautiful like, and i've never in like this nature, is the nature yeah, 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 yeah for sure the trees in fucking utah i mean wyoming salt lake City. everything 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 and like that's one thing that like i mean having a retirement home in fucking in utah would be like absolutely beautiful you know what i mean something like that i mean definitely like calls my attention but i mean if people really aren't happy in california i mean Dude, there's another 49 states that you can live in. You know what I mean? Oh, and 100%. guess what? And like, and it's not even to like to be rude. Those states could be fucking beautiful, and you can fucking love something that you didn't know that you like you because you didn't know about it. You know what I mean? Like for example, like on this trip, I visited seven states, and I loved all of them. Like no complaints on any of the states. Um, definitely an experience. Um, definitely. But yeah, I mean, people don't think about it. Maybe because you're from Cal like maybe like for example me like i'm from california like and i won't leave california but like people can't maybe people can't grasp the fact of like living in fucking sheridan wyoming you know what i mean or yeah. you know what i mean like it's just it's a whole different lifestyle it's not of yeah it's like not a concept that you can even grasp you know what i mean yeah but definitely um definitely like explore the states i mean definitely uh get uh, definitely get to know the states would you ever do like an RV tour? Um, yeah, maybe later when I have kids. Yeah, when I have kids, but definitely one that makes sense. Not the next one because it's gonna be winter season already. But I definitely want to ride in New York. Yeah, that that'll be, I guess, the cross country one. You know, the ride. How how is this whole COVID shit going? I mean, is this is this limited limiting any of your trips? Or are you super worried about it? Or you're kind of like, you know what? I'm just gonna do my thing and well, just move forward. Upon doing Sturgis, you know, I mean, um, even that was uh, that was actually really risky. I mean, it's like I said, I was only there for day one and day two, so it's not like it's not like I mean, it could have been worse, bro. Honestly, people were doing significantly worse stuff than what I was doing. So, well, well due to Sturgis, I mean. That was already like kind of a risky one. So I was thinking about going to Four Corners Motorcycle Rally, which is in Durango, California. I mean, <laughs> California, Durango, Colorado. But um, the dates were kind of short, so I just didn't want to. I had, I had already fucking taken, you know, like 13 days. I wasn't going to show up and then take another fucking, you know, four or five days or six days. Now, now I, I want to ask this just because just people are listening to these fucking fun adventures that you do and living in California. You, do you, you work? You have your own business? How, yeah. how would you describe that? So luckily enough, um, I work for my father. Um, basically, we um, have a party supply store in um, downtown L.A. So what we do, apart from the party supply store, we uh, import and export chilies and spices. Um, so, yeah. So luckily enough, um, I'm able to work on my schedule. I do work every day day that i'm not on vacation but yeah people do th like um people that ask me actually ask me that often that like how do i do it like with like with work and but yeah i'm luckily enough um i work a lot i play a lot um it is what it is yeah that, that's cool yeah i mean yeah like i said super fortunate enough that um where i'm at in work so um so i can do what i want to do basically so usually I, I talk about this in the beginning, but you know we're reaching towards the end. How how has COVID affected your future plans, or how is it gonna affect your future plans, and how is it affecting business if it's affecting it at all? It definitely affected business for. You're you're for, in downtown for a while, yeah. I'm like in downtown, like I was like basically the riots weren't in our backyard, you know. What I mean the riots actually like walked down our fucking street. Like, um, luckily enough we didn't have to board up. We never we never had an incident, you know stuff like that but definitely um definitely when covid started um we had like yeah we had really good days because due to the fact that we sell rice and beans like yeah a lot of like i don't want to um, exaggerate but when when covid started you know the only thing that you really <laughs> fucking need brother is rice, rice and, and beans. beans you know what yeah like rice and beans can fucking if you get, if you buy fifty pounds of rice and beans, whether you You're can good. feed your family for fucking like 30, 40 days, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's a ridiculous amount of so yeah, basically, um when it all started, I mean, things were like really fucking busy. And then well, what happens when everyone has a sack of rice and beans at their house? You know what I mean? Yeah. That that person's not gonna buy from you for the next fucking forty five days, you know what I mean? At least. Whether it be the businesses that bought five sacks for their businesses or whether it be a person that bought one sack for their house, that sack was gonna last you forever. Well, quick question. You know, of course, but quick question. Were you making more money before or now? And the reason I ask that is because 
before all the you sell to businesses, right? Mm-hmm. So more businesses were buying more rice. Mm-hmm. Now you're selling more rice to individuals and less businesses. Did it balance out, or are you actually? It definitely more? balanced out because I mean, definitely like with all the restaurants being closed. I mean, if they were selling thirty percent, then you were gonna sell them the thirty percent. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like whether if they used to buy basically if they used to buy ten sacks of fucking rice, they're gonna be buying three. You know what I mean? Right. So that's true. Um, Plus the demand on ex- the public. Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, we were, it's luckily enough, it's been like blessed the whole time. We've been able to stay open. We haven't had any problems. Um, work's been steady. Yes, it got uh, slow for a significant amount of time, but it's been steady. Like, like my father's always said, um, we all got to eat. We all got to eat. So whether, I mean, that's what it is, bro. I mean, since we're in the food industry and like so blessed to be in the food industry, we haven't had to close any of the locations and people are still like, I mean, no, it sounds bad, but people are still in, in need of a piñata. You know what I mean? You want to celebrate your kid's birthday. Like there's nothing wrong with you buying a bag of candy and, you know, and yeah, loading it up. did you guys yeah. do any of uh, the, the COVID-19, uh, you the know, green ones, the green one. Yeah. Piñatas? We have the one that the, we have, um, <laughs> we actually have them in stock ready to rock. Um, that's awesome. How are those sales? 1010 East 10th street, LA, California. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they, um, yeah, they look like huge germs, bro. They have like, they yeah. literally look like the photo that everyone's seen. They're like big germs. Yeah, no, I fucking love it. Now, how's it going to affect your future travels? Um, future travels. I mean, that's the thing with with Sturgis. I was able to do everything like camping and not in the hotels and just literally do it. I guess you can say backpacking or in the raw format. Yeah. Um. So. So your 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 plans are are not stopping. You're moving forward. Yeah. You're just I mean, taking precaution and. Just taking super precaution. I mean, people like like I said, a bunch of Karens like talking shit to me, but like they don't know that like I had fucking hand sanitizer <laughs> every fucking gas station that I like touch. You know what I mean? Absolutely. But yeah. um, one thing for the, the, actually one of the not cons, it's definitely not a con, but basically um, I can't take uh, basically what's November and December. I can't take any time off. It's like the only block out day that I set for myself. Why? Because um, like I said, everybody got to eat. And the thing is, we sell a lot of uh, corn husk for tamales. Yeah. Um. So tamale season is upon us in a couple of months. So what's November and December, I don't take any time off because I just don't because I get pretty busy. So we, we sell a lot of um a lot of Mexican products. So it would be the corn husk and the sugar cane and all those good stuff. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, people, that, it's an essential business. Yeah, so um, definitely I'm trying to get, since my birthday is the end of this month, I'll probably try to get... Maybe not something this month in, but I'll probably get like one, maybe three, four day thing in October. And, and are, are, you, are you still going to try to execute the thousand miles uh, within the near future? Or are you going to wait till after? That's after the thing. Year? I really, I really don't want to wait. I'm not going to fucking wait months at a time. So maybe, maybe in October. Maybe I know it's that's the thing. It's getting like closer to colder weather, but um, I it just it, it all depends where I want to hit it too. You know, what I mean, like. Portland, it gets pretty rain, like, like rain gets good. I mean, so as well in Colorado. So it all depends. It really just depends. Have you done a lot of riding on the, in the rain with the, the GS? Mm, no. Being that I'm from California and yeah. it never <laughs> fucking rains. I don't think that, I think, has it even rained since November? Uh, Yeah, it actually, when we uh, rented it from Eagle Riders, we. Uh, oh yeah, we- that. That, that Joshua Tree trip. but Oh, yeah. It rained the whole fucking time. All the way to Joshua Tree and all the way back. Just about. Dumb question. But, yeah, I definitely had my own GS by then. Yeah. You guys had rented yeah, them. Yeah. Remember I was you were in front one. with the fucking horn? Oh, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. I, I installed a... Oh, yeah. One of the upgrades I, I, on my I, bike. I want to do that, too. Yeah. I what ins- is it? I installed a um, Denali air horn, but it's not like the, like the small one. It's the big one. And, basically, my BMW sounds like a train now like yeah straight out like straight train like you move like with the harley you can move somebody with your exhaust with the bmw i can move somebody with my horn like and the lights mm -hmm. and the lights and when you press the horn the lights actually flash that's fucking sick. like it's like a thing that it does i think i think um clear waters calls it like a a something can yeah yeah like can am smart or something like that that. it hooks up to your system so when you honk it it, it, it strobes. It flickers them. Right. And fucking 20,000 lumens of fucking lights. Does your bike do that? Yeah. Of yeah. Oh, awesome. Because it's because 
yeah, you're right. That wouldn't make a difference because I was thinking because I installed my horn, but no, it's still part of the system. No, it's part of the, the clear water system, yeah, yeah, not exactly. the horn system. Mm -hmm. That's fucking awesome. Uh, what, what are we looking for the future on purchasing more bikes? Or are you going to um, hold off for a second? Fuck. I don't know. I mean, I really like Jaime's KTM 450. Um, I do want something uh, for the dirt more more like enduro because the problem is that uh, we took i took the bmw uh, with jaime and rio the other day and i can definitely hang but it is a definitely a, a heavy bike you know what i mean yeah so maybe uh, something like in the more enduro maybe um who's vinyl like 790 or a 690 um or a ktm but uh definitely right now with the bmw having the bmw and having the dyna i'm i'm pretty Pretty happy with myself, bro. I think I want to finish the building the dyna up. There's still a couple of things that I, I need to get done to finally like just be done with that bike. Yeah. I bought that bike in 16. Bought it brand new. You were talking about paint too. Yeah, a, a paint job would be nice. Paint jobs would get pretty fucking pricey, but I definitely definitely want a paint job. Yeah, they're super pricey. I remember when I had my FXDXT, my buddy Dean, he had another FXDXT. He had Hot Dog. Hot Dog was a um, Jesse James, mm -hmm. you know, painter. Hot Dog Customs. Yeah. He, he used to paint back then in 2006, 2007, around there. He would paint anywhere from like anywhere from like five to you know, 10 grand Fuck. back then. Yeah. But now it's like everybody's charging five yeah, yeah. to 10 grand. Mm -hmm. Oh, or, yeah. Or anybody, anybody, anybody. 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 Yeah. Which yeah. Is, yeah. Definitely. Which is which is fucking crazy. And I mean, don't get me wrong. There's some amazing, you know, fucking Jace from Fast Life Garage. He does. Oh, yeah. Killer yeah. Shit. That, 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 those paint jobs like I, I, I feel like just shipping my bike over there and just see if he would just want to do some test. paint. On yeah, it. Like, for sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. Definitely. Um. A quality paint job. I mean, the time and the efforts that they fucking put into that shit. Absolutely. I mean, Chase, Chase was telling me it takes him sometimes a week to do a helmet. Damn. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe it. I believe it. Um, the Like I said, the quality of the fucking work is there, though. I mean, it, the, of course you fucking pay to play, but those fucking paint jobs are fucking gnarly, bro. It doesn't get much better than... than and fast life <laughs> fucking paint job actually yeah that's uh, that, that's pretty yeah i've been i've been quoted like with valley customs i've been quoted with a couple of people but yeah everything's fucking like over three grand bro that's like for sure easy and another thing another thing that is actually like a california thing that i was actually talking to rio about like a cali price is definitely a thing you know what i mean like you can have in another state for some reason you can get the same quality of certain things and it wouldn't be a cali price for example like a 2000 okay you know how everyone likes the 2003 um like the dyna but yeah. the 2003 because it's like the yeah the anniversary, the edition, anniversary edition 100th anniversary yeah you can find them and i found multiple like multiple of those bikes in other states and they're like a fraction of the cost mm -hmm. And then once it gets, but that's always the case. Yeah, yeah, Even the FX DLS is. But the thing is, once that fucking bike that's from two thousand and three, you know, what I mean, it's seventeen years old, gets to California, it's like another fucking eleven thousand dollar bike, and you're like, bro, it's a two thousand and three. Yeah, you know eighty eight. Yeah, yeah, exactly, motor, exactly, fucking exactly. No ABS. Speed, no, 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 yeah, it yeah. has the old screw for your cruise control because it has oh, no that cruise. Is the, worst. the death. My Forster <laughs> has that one. Yeah, that fucking thing's a death trap. Yeah, no, it, it, it's true. Like my FX DXT was a 2003, and when I sold it, I, I sold it. Oof, I want to say in 2010, I sold it for like 14. Fuck yeah, yeah I so mean 13 five. Yeah, and like and and yeah, and maybe and your fun. bike definitely had the work, but um, those bike those bikes are are still super fucking super wild. Well, yeah, the FX DXTs, yeah. Yeah, I mean my Dyna has the T Sport and has the fucking bags, so I, I definitely have the T Sport look. I love, I love that look. I have a JD Fab on my bike. Oh, that's fucking awesome. Milo, I, I don't know. Anything else you want to shoot out to the listeners? Um, no, nah, brother. I a any riding advice? Any safety tips? Wear gloves. Wear yeah. some fucking steel toe boots. Yeah, they're heavy as fuck, but I highly recommend them. Um, Where can we find you? At LPZ Milo on Instagram, and that's basically where you can find me. Um, also, wear a good fucking helmet. I suggest wearing a Shoei Shoei RF 1200 or a GT Air, but definitely a good lid on your noggin is definitely recommended. But apart from that, everybody, um, thank you for your time. Um, thank everybody, you for being here, bro. 
everybody thank you guys for listening and milo out i'm, I'm pretty much done brother thank you brother excellent peace out Walk we'll out, catch brother. up again cool